So um, I'm from the 4D Supercomputing Centre um, in Australia. Uh, so just um, to tie together what you've mentioned earlier, so that, um, here we are. There's Australia, there's Europe, there's Asia, and where do we fit into this? So um, which continent are we on is the first question to be asked. So uh, there's a bit of confusion. So Australia can be a separate continent, as you can see here. That's often whether there's six continents, seven continents, Australia can be there. Um, we, uh, we entered the Eurovision Song Contest this year, so clearly we're part of Europe. Uh, if you just go into the North Atlantic, you'll find us sitting there. Um, I mean, it, was, it was actually held in Austria, not Australia, but you know, we're all close enough. So, is it European? Well, where do you actually end up thinking where you actually are based? This is where you play football. It's where you play soccer. And so, clearly, we are in part of Asia because... We are the Champions League winners, Western Sydney Wanderers, and we are the Asian Cup winners as well. So, yes. So we're definitely no. part of Asia. No. <laughs> uh, so um, Australia in context, just so you understand where we actually fit. Um, so we're a very big area of, uh, for a country, sixth largest in the world. Um, we've got a, a good economy, a high standard of living, very <laughs> mixed economy. The, this, the, um, but we have very uh, harsh weather phenomena. This is quite significant in terms of, therefore, we need a high-performance computer for our Bureau of Meteorology. Um, and so, at the moment, there is a procurement going on to get a very large machine for the Bureau of Meteorology. And that's the next big thing that's happening in HPC in our, in our country. Um, it's being helped very much, of course, you can't just generate new weather models and so on. So that's being developed at the National Computational Infrastructure, the NCI, uh, one of the two national supercomputing centres in Australia. Um, when people look at the top 500, they're often thinking about what's that number one machine or what's the new entry in the top 10? This year we had a new entry from Saudi Arabia. But we're also interested in um, the most important statistic at all, megaflops per capita. Uh, where do we actually fit in here? Australia does quite well out of this this year. We're uh, fifth overall in terms of how, how much we have given inside of our population. You could do this with GDP or anything, but with population. It's heavily influenced actually by a machine, a commercial machine, uh, that's uh, in the top 20. Um, otherwise, we'd be a little bit further behind, but still reasonably competitive. Um, so what about our actual research institutions? That's what we're really interested in to a great degree here. So we have um, a set of different institutions. To begin at the bottom, there are some specialised facilities. Uh, one of these facilities, for example, is very important for our synchrotron to be able to do some processing of data. We've also got some, uh, a GPU cluster. And then there are a set of machines that are in the top 500. Uh, the top 500 machines, uh, the CSIRO, our National Science Agency, has a, a GPU-based machine, but it also invests in the two national facilities as well. Uh, Victorian Life Sciences Computation Initiative is in the top 500, and then uh, the NCI and the Pawsey Centre. Um, the three uh, centres I just mentioned there, NCI, VLSCI and Pawsey, were all connected on our national network, um, and it's a very, very large country to have a national network on. Uh, given that it's quite sparsely spread out. Um, so the VLSCI, which was the first one to have a, ma a reasonably large machine, we've now got these uh, petascale, petaflop machines. This was petascale. It was about 800 teraflops of blue gene uh, Q about four years ago. So it's still there. It's still ticking along, although the blue gene Q is getting a little old now. Um, but uh, the, the recent announcement from VLSCI is that uh, they're now the head Australian node of the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, AMBL. And so, confusion about our continent a little bit. We tend to do this, we tend to engage with uh, various places. Uh, and AMBL is very important to the Bioinformatics Research Institution. Uh, the NCI, so NCI, or the, uh, the Australian National University, has had a long history of developing uh, computation, you know, constantly growing, pretty much as you would expect with a lot of things on the top 500 list. Uh, so the NCI machine, the large machine when it arrived, was about 25 uh, in the world. Um, it's supporting Australian researchers. It's a national research institution. Um, the, uh, it has a very important, very interesting uh, cloud, and it also has uh, it's just recently upgraded its storage capacity. So now it's got 100 gigabytes of bandwidth uh, for its general storage, not for its scratch storage. The, uh, the, the machine, the 
uh, the large machine there, Rigen, 1.2 petaflops of peak capacity. Very interesting is before people have started with things like burst buffers and all sorts of things to speed up their I.O., uh, this machine already had uh, 150 gigabytes per second of bandwidth for its 1.2 petaflops. If you have a look at petaflops per gigabytes per second bandwidth ratio and so on, this is one of the, the best in the world uh, up to now. Um, the next uh, national supercomputing centre, the Pauli supercomputing centre, the one that I'm from. Um, so we have a petascale machine, we have 1.5 petaflop peak Cray XC40. Um, as I mentioned, there is a commercial machine in the uh, top 20 from Australia, but otherwise this is the, uh, the most powerful research machine uh, that we have in, in the southern hemisphere. Uh, 35,000 cores, so a small number of cores, small, uh, lower throughput in that regard than compared to the NCI machine, but higher peak capacity and very good network. Um, the other thing that we do at the 40 Centre is we're very interested in radio astronomy, that's one of our purposes, and particularly support for the square kilometre array. Um, and the data process of the square kilometre array we have on another machine that's also in the top 500, but it's bound about number 400. Um, and it's this, this machine, the Galaxy, is designed for real-time radio astronomy work. In fact, to the extent that if the file system isn't working, they, have to park, they will have to park the dishes of the telescope because it's coming streaming 800 kilometres away from the Australian outback straight down to our machine. We also therefore need to have a lot of data storage, so we have over 100 petabytes of raw storage because this radio astronomy data is that's being generated of the processed products, most of the data gets thrown away, but the processed products are going to be growing very, very rapidly over many years. And now that there is a rebaselining that's completed for the square kilometre array, we can plan for what's going to happen in five to ten years' time. <coughs> so that, I did get in my ten minutes. <laughs> Yep. Well, oh, very good. Um, so if you want to um, find out some more from us, uh, then come along and see us at booth 1323, the NCI and Pawsey booth. Uh, do the Australians want to just wave their hands so people can actually see who they are anyway? And so we have representatives from NCI, from the VLSCI, and from the Pawsey Supercomputing Centre. Thank you very much. <laughs>